Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 27th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Of course, we have to start today with the Cups vulnerability that was today released and also patched in many distributions. In Linux, Cups is essentially responsible for printing. And the reason it listens on the network, well, there are a couple reasons. First of all, people may want to send a document to a remote printer. So that's where Cups comes in play. But where this vulnerability really matters is a component in Cups that basically listens on port 631 UDP in order to figure out if there are any printers on the network. And there is this protocol where printers will advertise themselves and then they will appear automatically in the user's uh, printing console as an option to print to. The problem here is that this interaction is well really meant for local networks and as a result there is no real authentication involved so any printer that advertises itself to the client is being picked up here and secondly and that's probably the worst problem some of the parameters being passed into cups are not properly validated so it all starts with this problem in the cups browse d that's the component that listens on udp 6301 by default this is not enabled in any major Linux distribution because it's kind of uh, no longer used this protocol, but it is installed on all major Linux distributions. So it's possible for a user who may have had difficulties getting printing to work or so to accidentally set up uh, this uh, CUPS Browse D. And at first, Cups Browse D, that vulnerability basically just adds a bad printer uh, to uh, the user's system. Uh, that printer could also overwrite an existing printer. So to the user, the printer may end up uh, totally legit. The problem then escalates as the user is trying to use the printer. By abusing this weak and uh, really non-existing validation in Cups Browse D, you're able to configure that printer in such a way that when a user prints a document, arbitrary code will be executed on the user's system. So there are a total of four vulnerabilities here. Three are specifically related to the improper filtering of parameters as printers are being added. And then the fourth one, and that's CUPS filters. That's where the code execution happens. The fix in part is, well, just remove the CUPS Browse D daemon because like I said, it's really no longer needed. And that's, for example, one thing that Ubuntu apparently has done. Red Hat also vulnerable if you enable uh, this component, also released a fix, haven't looked at yet what they exactly fixed here. There's also some additional filtering that the CUPS project implemented for these other components in order to validate that these URLs being passed to the printer driver are actual valid URLs. So there was a lot of hype around this vulnerability in the last couple of weeks. I mentioned it once, I believe, last week. Uh, Simone Margaritelli, who goes by Evil Socket, has released a vulnerability and uh, basically drummed up a lot of sort of hype, I have to say, around that the CUPS developers didn't respond properly. Couple lessons here. First of all, take a look at some of the interaction in GitHub tickets and such uh, between uh, Simone and uh, the developers. Some of the language here really not appropriate if you're talking to volunteers maintaining a, a large project uh, like this. Secondly, uh, the CVSS score uh, that uh, Simone came up with of 9.9. .9, I think is very generous. Uh, I went uh, through the CVSS calculator myself for this vulnerability and it came up more with like an 8.6, uh, which puts it sort of in important, not critical. Should you patch this vulnerability? Yes, you should um, definitely apply the patches. If you have some kind of automatic patching enabled, that'll happen anyway. And you probably should check on your systems and you can easily do that uh, with you know, syscontrol or 
any assistant that you're using to manage uh, these uh, demons and make sure that CAPS ProSD is not enabled on your system. Also, one uh, potential sort of vulnerable population that was pointed out uh, was basically printers running on Linux. There are a lot of printers running Linux that use CAPS in order to receive documents uh, from clients. I don't really see this affected here by this uh, vulnerability. Either way, close port 631, TCP and UDP actually. If you have an open, unsecured printer connected to the internet, uh, no firewall, no username and passwords, nothing, it's easy to spot those. Those are the ones that are out of paper uh, because there are plenty of folks around there that, as a joke, uh, just uh, you know, print stuff uh, on printers that are exposed like this. But again, I don't think printers are your main concern here because printers usually don't need to add and discover other printers on the network. Mac OS uh, potentially is vulnerable to Mac OS famously does use uh, in some parts uh, the CUPS daemon does not use a browse D as far as I know. At least I couldn't find it on any of uh, my uh, Macs. Sometimes, of course, uh, that code got migrated into other uh, binaries. Also, well, that's all I have for you uh, today. Uh, hopefully, it's good news for you and uh, you can have a nice uh, weekend uh, wherever you are and not having to run around and do emergency patches on systems. There's always a risk uh, with things like this that I missed uh, something else that was actually more important. But uh, definitely, I want to set you at peace here for the weekend and apply your patches, but uh, no need to put in any overtime on this. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.